This video is part of a series on the XV6 operating system kernel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the linking of the object files to produce the image file. I'm going to talk about the file kernel.ld. This is not a C program and not an assembly program. Instead, it is a linker script file, which gives commands to the linker to tell how to put things in memory. So I'm going to start with uh, talking about how memory is used by the kernel. So here is a picture of uh, the memory uh, of the kernel code and data. And the linker will essentially place all the code in memory and uh, figure out where everything is going. It doesn't actually put it in memory. It just uh, figures out where in memory it's going. The linker is uh, normally something that you don't think too much about as a C programmer. The defaults uh, that are used for the linker will usually work for most uh, user level programs. Uh, but for building a kernel, we need to be more specific and include some commands. And so I'll be talking about the file that gives those commands to the linker. And what the linker will do is we'll take all of the data from the object files and combine it into the executable file. So here in green, I'm showing what comes from the object files from the various parts of the kernel. And the linker will figure out where in memory to place all of that material. And then it will build the executable file, which contains all of the data to be loaded in memory. Later, when we get ready to load the kernel and, and run the kernel, uh, Kimu, the emulator that will be that is being used, will read the executable file and put this stuff in memory at the addresses that the linker has chosen. So remember that when you compile something, a, a C program, it produces assembly code and the assembly code is compiled or sorry assembled, and that produces an object file. Or maybe you just write assembly code like we have in this file entry.s and uh, the assembler produces object file, an object file for uh, that. The object files contain a number of segments, or sometimes I call them sections, but each segment uh, will contain a bunch of data that should be placed somewhere together in memory. But the compiler and the assembler don't really know where in memory that segment will be placed. So there can be several kinds of segments, and these are given names. Uh, the dot text is a name. The dot read only data, dot ro data is a name. Dot data, dot bss. These are the different kinds of segments, and um, I'm not sure whether you want to call these the names of the segments or sort of generic types of the segments, but uh, it uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, the dot text segments will contain executable code. The dot data segments will contain the variables of the program. These are uh, the things that will be both read and updated and may have initial values. We also have read-only data, and that kind of a segment will contain data that is um, to be initialized, but it will never be updated at runtime, so it's read-only. And we also have something called the BSS segments. These contain data that uh, is not initialized with any particular value. Instead, it is to be zero filled or initialized with zeros when loaded into memory. And so these segments don't need a, don't have any initializing data, so they could be quite small in the object files and the executable files um, since they don't have the data. OK, so as a result of compiling and assembling a bunch of pieces, all the, all the files that we've talked about and will talk about in future videos, we have a bunch of segments. We have a bunch of text segments, data segments, and so on. The linker figures out where in memory to place these things. And it will place them starting at uh, this location here, which is the two gigabyte uh, boundary. And it will put all the text segments together all the data segments together, all the other segments, all the BSS segments together, and the read-only data segments together. We also have a special segment, which we give a specific name to. 
This is for the trampoline code, and that's called the tramp sec for the trampoline section or segment. And that has to be placed specially. On the linker's uh, command line, we'll specify a number of different object files. And the segments will be grouped together. All the text segments from each of the object files will be grouped together. And they will be placed in order according to the order of the object files as they are listed on the command line. The command line to the linker will list the object file for this entry code. Remember, we'll, we'll go into depth on the entry file. It's an assembly language uh, file that uh, is very short, but it's the first thing that gets executed. Yeah, the object file for entry is listed first. So that code will be the very first code. And it contains, this file contains a label called underscore entry. And it's actually the uh, label of the very first instruction in that file. So that text segment will go first. The linker will place it first. And so we will begin execution by jumping to the very first uh, location of the kernel. That's the so-called entry point. And then it will include the text segments from all the other C files. There are a bunch of them, more than I've shown here. We have this special tramp uh, trampoline segment, and uh, it'll place that. And then it will group all the read-only segments together from the different object files, all the data segments, and all the BSS segments. And it will produce an executable file that has four segments. It will, ha it will combine all the text segments into one dot text segment, all the read-only data segments into one segment, all the data segments into one data segment, and all the BSS segments into one BSS segment. In the course of placing these things in memory, the linker will figure out the addresses of everything. And this will allow it to fill in a lot of uh, material that's, uh, that cannot be filled in until this point. For example, when we load a variable in our code with uh, the address of some variable, well, the address of that variable is not known by the compiler and not known by the assembler and will only be determined at link time. And so at that point, the linker will go back and modify the code to insert the exact number. And we may store, we may initialize some uh, variables with addresses and the linker will go into the exact location of that variable and, and modify or, or initialize that data to be the correct address. Only the linker can do this because only the linker knows where things will actually go in memory. Okay, now let's look at this. Uh, oh, one th other thing I want to mention is after the uh, after we finish the linking and begin the emulation and Kimu loads this thing into memory, and the kernel actually begins executing. Uh, then the kernel will see where the pages are, and it will mark those pages as either executable or not, and either writable or not, and readable. So the kernel, once it's executing, will build a page table that will describe these, these, the data that's in memory, and it will mark everything that was in the text segment as executable, and it will mark everything else as read-write. The linker will also determine the values for a couple of important variables, and in particular, e-text is the boundary at the end of the code and the beginning of the data portion of the kernel, and end is the point at the very end of the uh, data section. Uh, so it will set these variables uh, and we'll also set this variable underscore trampoline. That can only be done by the linker, and once the linker figures out where in memory things will be placed, it will place, it will define those values, and it will fill in those values in the code wherever those symbols are used. These little tick marks here indicate page boundaries, by the way, and we'll see how um, the script file for the linker causes things to be aligned properly. So now let's take a look at this file kernel.ld. This is written in a sort of a special language that the linker will understand. 
And as I said, most times when you use the linker, you don't have a script file and the defaults or the default commands will be used and you don't have to worry about this stuff. But uh, this is essentially a sequence of commands and it's saying that uh, produce an output executable file for the RISC-V architecture, that's what we're dealing with here. And this symbol named underscore entry, which is defined by uh, an assembly code statement in the entry.s file, that will be the entry point for the program, okay? And then it's saying, in the output file, create several sections. Create a text segment, a read-only data segment, a data segment, and a BSS segment. So it's saying, create the text segment, read-only data, and BSS segments. Okay, so dot indicates the current location or the, an address. And so what this is saying is, begin at this fixed location. So it's telling the linker to put things at, the, at this memory location here. So start there and work up in memory. And now it says for the text segment, in order to create that, grab all of the dot text segments and anything that begins uh, with, uh, you, this is a, a wild card here, the, the asterisk here is a wild card. Grab all of the segments from all the files and throw them in to this segment that we're creating. This star here is saying, uh, is file names. It's saying from all the object files that were on the command line, uh, grab those segments. Okay, so um, it does, it grabs them and, and, puts, and puts them into the text segment. This is the text segment that we're creating here. And these are the text segments that are coming from all the files here. Normally they're just called dot text, but this uh, wildcard uh, picks up anything else that we have. Uh, these are done in order as they are specified uh, on the command line. So the first object file on the command line will be the one for entry, uh, the entry.ob, entry.o for the entry.s file. And that will go first, and that will put our entry right at the very beginning. Next we say uh, dot equals a line, and this is basically forcing it to move up to the next page boundary. So that's, the linker will then insert some uh, unused memory here up to the next page boundary, and that gets us up to here. And then it says, define this label, underscore trampoline, as that, as the new current location. So that the, tells us the, the linker that we want to name a symbol, underscore trampoline, and we want its value to be that address right there. And then we're saying, include the segment that's called tramp sec, uh, tramp section, the trampoline section, uh, from whatever file it comes from. And so any and all segments with this name, and there will only be one, is then placed here. And then we have another align, so we skip up to the next page boundary, skip up to the next page boundary. And that's what I'm showing here. And then it says, uh, uh, assert that the current location minus trampoline is exactly one page. And if it's not, we print out an error message that uh, the trampoline code uh, was larger than one page. It won't be, but we check that right here by doing the subtraction. And then finally, we define this symbol e-text at the current location. So that's what we're doing here. Now we build the read-only data segment, and it's uh, we do alignment. This is a 16-byte alignment. Uh, we see that occurring several places. Uh, these segments should be um, aligned on quad word boundaries. 16 byte or 128 bit boundaries. And we're saying pick up any uh, any segments that begin with uh, dot s read only data or dot ro data and some variations. Um, then uh, that creates the read only data segment. Then we have the data segment and it again uh, it says do some alignment. We're not doing page alignment, we're just doing a 16 byte alignment and pick up everything from Remember, this is a wildcard for the file, and it's picking up all the uh, dot data segments, and we have some variations on the different names. Uh, I don't want to go into details. I'm not sure I even understand all these details. Uh, BSS, uh, again, we have a similar thing going on. We're picking up all the segments or the sections that uh, have names that start with dot BSS. And finally, 
we are defining a name uh, end. So here we're defining the name end at wherever we end. So we might not be on a page boundary because there was no alignment here for a page uh, alignment. So we just mark end right there. Oops, we mark end right there. Uh, so uh, I'm indicating that it may not be on a page boundary. Uh, and uh, that then allows the linker to uh, produce the executable file that we want, and it will be loaded into memory at the right. At, when it, if it's loaded into memory at this address, um, then uh, the code will work properly. So that's it for the linker. Uh, if you didn't understand all that, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I think you can understand the kernel in isolation from understanding this uh, linker script file. Okay, I will see you in the next video.